Right here on Warrior Wednesday, brought to you by Freedman's Appliance. Trusted name since 1922. Visit freedmansappliance.com today. It is time for Cleared to Play, everybody. We're going to take you inside the tent, get you updated on the latest injuries in the Bay. Proud to partner with UCSF Health on this segment and bring an associate professor of orthopedic surgery, Dr. Narav Pandya. Good doc. Hello. Hey, how you guys doing? Yeah, we're doing great. Good, good. We're doing even better because Steph Curry's coming back. Not sure exactly when, but it's going to be either Sunday, Tuesday, or Thursday. That is the word from the team based on that news, the word of scrimmaging, and just watching him move around the court while not in the game. What's uh, what's your thought here, Doc? Yeah, I think the scrimmaging is really the, the key part with any of these kind of soft tissue injuries around the knee. So. You obviously, you, you kind of go through the initial steps of getting pain and swelling down, and then you see him do individual work, and you're like, oh, that's a great sign. And then hearing his scrimmage is, is very, very good. So I think just really it's going to be based on how is his knee responding, how is it feeling after that scrimmage. And I think that's going to really determine what day he comes back. I wouldn't be surprised if there is a little bit of a minutes restriction early on because he's been, you know, obviously he's missed a, a decent amount of time both with the shoulder and now with his knee. Um, but I think everything points to a, a positive sign for him being back in the next couple of games. And, uh, Hopefully his knee responds well. He doesn't have any residual soreness, and uh, he can, can really help us in that in these last couple of games. Is part of the, I guess, unease in the timeline the fact that these are ligaments that we don't normally associate with uh, basketball-related injuries? Yeah, absolutely. We have really nothing to really compare against, you know, in terms of athletes. I mean, we have lots of data on people who have, like, bad, bad injuries from, like, traumas off motorcycles and cars. But if you look at athletes, we just don't know. Number one, how is the knee supposed to respond? Number two, what's the normal soreness that you'll experience? Um, you know, like we know with a meniscus or with an ACL. So I think a lot of it is, okay, let's have him play. Like, what kind of symptoms is he having? Is this concerning or not? And then kind of increasing his load a little bit. So I think we are, they definitely are being more cautious with this. And I think it's, it's reasonable because we just don't know how players will respond with this kind of injury. So it's kind of a little bit of a give and take scenario and see how his body responds. Yeah. What, what's the re-injury risk at any point this month? I think it would be pretty minimal for this kind of injury. I mean, the way it really happened was this blow to the knee. So, I mean, you would have to imagine that you would have to get hit in that same area, um, which in and of itself is really rare for it to happen. Um, what you get a little bit more worried about is if he is coming back and there is any residual soreness, does he compensate and hurt something else? Does he, you know, turn an ankle or, or kind of, you know, have like a quad or hamstring strain? Curry is such a great athlete. I think there's a little low likelihood of that, and the medical staff is being really cautious. But that's what I get more worried about. Could there be some secondary issue? It would have to be like the exact same kind of blow that happens for that to occur. But Curry's had two injuries this year where it was really the right time, right place, and a weird blow that happened with the shoulder now with this knee. So, Hopefully those don't happen, and uh, there's a high likelihood he'll be able to play throughout the uh, throughout the season into the playoffs. Yeah, a little bit of a freak injury for Steph Curry, and we hope he's back for the final dozen or so and ready to roll. Gary Payton, the second, we don't know about his ability to come back with the adductor strain once he's able to resume basketball related activity. What's his return to play like? You know, I think there will probably be a minutes restriction with him, but I think the way that they utilize him and they utilize him last year, that hopefully shouldn't be that much of an issue. I mean, if you can get 10 to 15 minutes of him when he starts, you know, hopefully at the end of the regular season of the playoffs, I think that'll be fine. And then him hopefully ramping up after that. The good news is that we do know after core muscle surgery, these adductor issues are a common source of pain if you are that 10% that continues to have issues. So I think as long as he gets this muscle kind of taken care of, he gets it rehabbed, he's fine. Um, the likelihood of this being an issue that he can't play through is pretty minimal. I mean, we did see with the Trailblazers, we did play with a little bit of discomfort. So I think that if there is some residual pain, but he's gotten that area stronger um, and he's playing for short spurts of time, I, I think he should be fine. I don't anticipate this. You don't hear people sideline for core muscle injury for like their whole career. So I think just giving them time to rehab and get this right will place them in a position to uh, to be effective in the playoffs. Doc Pandia with us here every Wednesday, Willard and Dibs. All right, let's talk Brock Purdy. Uh, Doc Feely came on last week, did not sound any alarms based on inflammation still being preventative as far as them starting a surgery. Uh, do you concur? And what happens if they come to the same conclusion again this weekend? Yeah, I mean, that's always the worry that you have with these injuries. I and mean, I think we don't hear about this a lot in baseball players because it's kind of the slow degenerative process that happens. And, you know, Brock Purdy basically had, you know, an ACL-type injury to his elbow. So you're going to get a lot of swelling, a lot of stiffness. And I think with this kind of injury, because there's such a lo so little, you know, so few quarterbacks have had it, you want to optimize everything that goes on with that elbow. So you want full mobility. You don't want them to have any kind of residual nerve symptoms if that's the case. So 
it assumes that the surgeon feels like this may potentially be something that clears up. So if there is still residual stiffness or swelling, then you do get, as you get further and further out from the injury date, then you worry about, okay, do we just have to go in there and take, take the chance in terms of operating on this? Cause then you're getting into more scar tissue. You're going to get stiffness just from waiting longer. So I do believe that he's probably pretty close to getting that stiffness and mobility back that it sounds like based on the reports, what John Lynch was saying was what prevented it. Um, and if you get in a good environment, then you have a better chance of optimizing outcomes. Now, the larger issue is, does that then push back the timeline? And that's what we don't know. And I think the one thing we need to consider is not necessarily how this may impact his throwing, but because this was a traumatic injury, how does his elbow hold up to people running into it all the time? Um, I think that's the big question that we won't know until he gets into the season, less so uh, how his throwing accuracy will be um, when he comes back. And when he gets the internal brace, if he does avoid Tommy John, what is the, the rehab and the internal healing necessary before he's able to resume football-related activities? So typically with this kind of like if you do the repair internal brace surgery, most people can start throwing right around three months and essentially could show up to training camp and, you know, kind of like month four, month five, and be without getting hit doing most things. The data that we have in pitchers um, suggests that at six months, you're pretty much cleared for everything. So we don't have really good data to suggest when you're ready to have a 300 pound lineman fall on your elbow. Um, so I think that for most people will transition that baseball data over and say, look, you're probably ready to go right around five or six months and take contact. Um, the tough thing is how the elbow responds and if there's any residual pain or, or stiffness or mobility issues that could push things back. But typically, you're ready to go in terms of seeing him throw at three months and then get back to pretty much everything at six months, assuming um, there's no other damage that they see when they're in there. Okay, Doc. Uh, something tells me that next week's going to be a real, real interesting one because we may have Steph Curry games to talk about and we should, we hope, have some Brock Purdy answers. Absolutely. A lot, yeah. lot going on in the Bay Area. No doubt. All right. We'll talk to you then. Thank you, sir. No problem. Take care, guys. Okay.